The Stormforce Games merch store is now open. Come browse the latest and greatest merchandise that Streamlabs has to offer, from t-shirts, hoodies, jackets, hats, and more, all with your favorite Stormforce Games logos and branding. All Stormforce Games merch is priced to sell, with most items priced so low, you can't beat it. Come check out the Stormforce Games merch store on Streamlabs. You're watching Stormforce Games, live streaming three nights a week at twitch.tv slash stormforcegames. Next on Stormforce Games, it's Farming Simulator 22. Stormforce Games starts right now. Good evening, everyone. 7 p.m. on the 2nd of June, 2022. Hello and welcome to the show, everyone. I'm TV Guy Jay. This is Stormforce Games. We are hopefully starting anew here with uh, a, a semi-regular stream schedule. I think it's going to end up being uh, Thursday night, uh, hopefully Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, but I don't know about the Friday night quite yet um, I missed last night because of a special event diabolical diabetics birthday so I was not around but uh, tonight we're gonna stream and we're gonna play uh, farm sim 22 however we're gonna start a new farm um, on that one because I'm, I'm not really happy with the vanilla game map there um, I, I forget what it's called but we have a new, we have a couple of new maps that we're going to be exploring. Uh, one of them tonight, and one of them likely uh, next stream as well. Uh, and this one, if you are a fan of the Farming Simulator um, franchise, you will recognize this map immediately. This is a uh, beloved map, a well-known map, and uh, hopefully. Uh, because it's a modified map, because it's a mod map, hopefully it's developed correctly. And if it is, that will allow us to play it um, for a long period of time. So, we'll let you in on the secret right now. Uh, this is the farmhouse. And you probably recognize it already if you're uh, into the franchise. I'll just turn this way. And you'll be able to see 
couple of storage barns, and we'll pull up the whole map now. And you will see that it is, in fact, Goldcrest Valley from FS17 that was eventually converted to FS19. And we didn't play it very much on FS19 because the conversion wasn't very good. Uh, and now it has been reconverted to FS22. There's actually two versions of it. This one, I, I looked at them both before stream, and this one I actually like a little bit better. So we're going to try this one out and see um, how it works. Now, the other thing, too, is that uh, I have another map called Midwest Horizons. It's a 4X map. It's huge. And we're going to try that one as well. But this one we're going to try tonight. So hopefully you enjoy it, because I know I'm going to, or at least I hope I'm going to. <laughs> uh, we started off on easy mode, so we already own uh, three fields, and we have some buildings built. There's a lot of areas on this map, a lot of like uh, production points on this map, so that's really awesome. Uh, there's also pre-installed animal enclosures. You have the horse paddock up here, the pigs, uh, the chickens the uh, sheep over here, and then the cows way down here. So you have one of everything, which is fantastic. And again, you have all of the uh, different drop points. You have the um, different production points, the cell points, and all of that stuff. So I'm really excited. I'm hoping that this is going to work out really well. Um, you have the animal dealer over here, and cereal factory, sugar mill, oil mill, etc., etc., etc. You have the spinnery. And I want to say that there was a like a bakery or something over here too. There's the vehicle shops. Um, there's the tailor shop. Carpentry. There's the bakery. I, I thought the bakery was down in here somewhere on the original map, but you know. Uh creative license, I guess. So <clears throat> we're gonna explore and see exactly what we are uh, up to. Hey, there's someone I was hoping would drop by. How you doing? Hang in there, bud. Uh, a frequent player of Marbles on stream. A newly minted Twitch affiliate. So show her some support over on her channel. And a fellow weather geek like myself. <clears throat> You probably dropped in a little bit late. You probably didn't see the whole open of the stream that I do every stream. It's basically a television show. So, I know you'd, you'd immediately recognize it if you <laughs> if you heard it, saw it. Um, I'm just exploring this map here. I already have some equipment. I see a tractor with a cart over there. I see a harvester. I see what looks to be another tractor with maybe a cultivator behind it and to watch the VOD for it oh nonsense nonsense this channel is all about on demand here I'll show you I would warn you though if you're wearing headphones that it may be a little bit loud I'm, my volume levels are all over the place you're watching Stormforce Games, live streaming three nights a week at twitch.tv slash stormforcegames. Next on Stormforce <laughs> Games, it's Farming Simulator 22. Stormforce Games starts right now. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, there you have it. <clears throat> I guess I just ran out of ideas. <laughs> I I run this, I literally run this like a basically a TV show. I mean, I've got the experience, why not? Um Whoops, that's not the right one. <laughs> there I am. Um, yeah. I just have fun with it, you know? Like, whatever. 
people from only people from this area are gonna know what that is anyway so it's it's lost on a lot of people because most of my viewers are from like the UK and elsewhere in the world um, so that th that little bit is lost on a lot of people but you and I both understand what that means okay whenever we heard that and I don't know if you're from around here originally but uh, whenever we heard that that meant no school that meant school was canceled so that brings me back and of course I do other fun things too like uh, ads and stuff like my own ads what's up diabolical diabetic happy birthday which was yesterday which is why I wasn't streaming yesterday I was out and about out and about what do I want to do here? <clears throat> I suppose I should probably do some work, huh? Um, so I have nothing planted on 12. I have... What the hell is planted on 14? Barley. Barley's planted on 14. And I have what looks like wheat on 15. Uh, yep. All right. Uh, oh, wait. Is... Okay. Thought 12 might be grass. <laughs> Talk about the winnings from yesterday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, winning a... Uh... That's cultivated. Okay. Uh, winning... Uh, like 130 bucks on a dollar fifty bet on the slot machine. I was pretty happy with that. I mean, I, that's that's the highest I've ever, that's the highest win I've ever had at Oxford. Um, on a slot, anyway. I mean, I do much better at the tables, but on the slots, I think my max that I ever won was like ten bucks or something. <laughs> um, so yeah. I mean, hmm. I don't know. I don't know. That goes that goes both ways, you know. All right. So let's see. Let me look at the planting schedule here. Um, where the hell is it? Right here. Ha ha. So currently, it's August, middle of August. I can plant canola. I can plant. Poplar, grass, oilseed radish. And in starting next month, I can plant wheat and barley. So. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. Do I want to wait until next month? I probably want to wait until next month. Right? And then what else do we have? Whoops. What else do we have? We have... 14, which is harvested, so that doesn't matter. We can cultivate that. And then we have 15, which is ready for harvest. And that's wheat. Laundry folding time, come chat soon. Yeah, roger that. 10-4, good buddy. All right, so let's just do what we know we can do right now, which is harvest. How about it? So we're going to unfold this bad boy. Should probably put the header on. And then we'll just go to work. <clears throat> so hang in there. What are you what are you up to today? You're not streaming. You must have worked, I would imagine. Um, what are your plans for the rest of the day slash evening? Or do you have a stream planned? If not, when do you have your next stream planned? These are all questions that the people want to know. The <laughs> one with the couch. Yep, I feel that. I We got home this morning. And I basically went right back to bed. And I slept until 
about an hour ago? An hour and a half ago, maybe? Stream Saturday noonish. Ah, bummer. I'll be I'll be working, but that's okay. Because I can still pop in from time to time. Um The cool thing about my new job is that while I while I'm driving most of that eight hours, I do take frequent breaks uh, for, you know, 15, 20 minutes, half hour at a time. So, unless it's busy, unless I'm called out to an incident, uh, I can just kind of, oops, smack my microphone and chill, you know? cultivator, or this, uh, harvester is slow at best. It does not have GPS installed. I miss my New Holland CR1070 because it's much faster, much larger, and can be fitted with a GPS. Although I think this one probably could too if I paid the money for it. I'm gonna attempt, I'm gonna make the, the best attempt that I can at doing this farm from scratch the right way which means not taking out a business loan, which is Stormforce Games speak for money cheat, money cheat. Used to be able to visit streams at work, pretty hectic, yeah. I, I mean, like I said, with, with me doing what I do, it's, it's feast or famine. Like, it's either not busy or it's busy. And if it's busy, I don't have the time, but if it's not busy, then I I look for things to do. <laughs> I will sit there and just be bored. But it pays me very, very well, so I can't really complain. I'm happy with that. I'm out of a job that was just completely disrespectful to me and uh, into something better now that you know, lets me kind of do my own thing, for the most part. Supply chain. Oh, that yeah, that's awful. That's awful. I mean, I'm... I guess my job could still kind of be considered public safety, but it's more transportation than anything else. Um, so, yeah. It's... There's no, let's be real, there's no shortage of dumb drivers in the world, so as long as that continues, I will be plenty busy at work. But I used to work in a warehouse. It was miserable. I hated every minute of it. Um, I mean, I've done so much in my life. I spent 20 years in broadcast TV. I spent lots of time in the service industry in various capacities. Uh, manufacturing, you know, technical, like, uh, communications, all that stuff. I've done so much. Yep. <clears throat> yep. My last job in the service industry was, uh, was a car dealership, actually. I worked in service. And that made me realize, while I love the people that I worked with, and I love the overall, you know, feel of the dealership, I could not stand entitled customers. And that's one thing that just drives me nuts. Uh, eh, there we go. That's one thing that just drives me nuts in general, is people with a sense of entitlement that knows no bounds. And that's what, that's what this was. Oops, missed a little bit. Um, it, it, you know, it's me, 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 me. I want this for free, 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 free. And if you don't do exactly what I say, I'm going to mark bad things on your customer survey. And that makes your pay go away. So, yeah. That just, it was so miserable. It was so miserable. 
And it made me a miserable person. It really did. I mean, I'm a miserable person anyway. But... This this was just like... I was so angry all the time. I was so miserable. But now I'm... You know, now I'm kind of... It's still... My job is still a service job. I guess it could still be considered service industry. It's it's like a mix of transportation slash service slash public safety. And the cool thing is, is like... I have total autonomy over what I do. So, like, if I want to just sit in my truck at a crash scene and just not do anything, I can do that. Because it's not my job to respond to, or it's not expected of me to take action at a crash. I can just kind of sit there. Because my job is primarily ensuring the safety of other responders, which is awesome. I can sit there in my truck, my arrow board up, my lights on, and just have a snack. And I love snacks. <laughs> so, it's so it's so nice because you know, I don't I don't have customers per se. I mean, I do in the sense that everyone is my customer really, but I don't have customers, it's not like a store where customers come in and they expect something and they get pissed if, you know, you don't do it a certain way. Like, everyone that I encounter out on the road is in need of me in some fashion. And that's great because that means I control the situation. It means I set the mood, I set the expectations. It's flippin' fantastic. It might be the best job I've had so far. It certainly pays me the, the most. It pays me a lot more than I made in TV. Um, and it will... I think it will allow me more financial freedom, more happiness, and that's what I need. More happiness. I used to need games like this to chill me out at the end of the day. This is therapeutic. <laughs> but now, I don't really need this. Maybe I'll go back to playing Overwatch. <laughs> no, nobody wants to see that. Thank you. Thank you very much. <sighs> it is nice to not have to, like fear going into not fear but you know what I mean like not look forward to going into work you know what I mean it's nice to just like oh I have to work today cool I wonder what will happen you know I wonder what kind of adventures I will see as opposed to oh man I gotta go into work and deal with shitty customers today Ugh. kill me it's great <laughs> Your job stresses you out. All right, let's... Real talk. Real talk, okay? I mean, I get it. I get it. Like, th there are jobs out there that stress people out. So, my question is... My question to you... Answer this honestly if you want to. Why... Why stay in that job? Is there something... Uh, something keeping you there... Or is it just the trouble of looking for something else? Nothing keeping you there. Okay. So that begs the question, why? Why stay there then? Okay. This is a question. I'm not being... I don't mean to sound like an a-hole or be facetious or anything. This is a genuine, genuine uh, question. Because I had to ask myself that question several times over several jobs like why what is keeping you here um easier than finding a different job i totally get it totally get it um <clears throat> however 
I mean, that's true. The only problem is the bar is set so goddamn high to be a dispatcher that, you know, unless you're 100% perfect in every way, they won't hire you. Does its job of paying my bills. Now, that's, that's, I get that. That's understandable. And that was one thing that I was most concerned about, too, was like, you know, how, how am I going to pay my bills? But I'm the type of person that, like, even if I'm in a job, I'm looking for something else. Like, even if I'm totally happy, I'm looking for something else because you never know. There may be something else out there that you're doing uh, that is the same as what you're doing now that pays 10% more or 20% more. Um, there may be a job out there that is similar and pays better, or maybe it doesn't. Maybe it pays the same, but it's closer to home, or maybe there's better benefits, or whatever. You know, um, that's I, I've been up and down that road because I've had way more jobs than a human being should have. But I had to ask myself these questions: like, why? Why do this? Why keep putting myself through this? I'm 30, 38 years old now. I think I can't even remember. Like, why am I doing this? I'm almost forty. Am I going to spend the rest of my life just doing miserable, menial jobs? Or am I going to, like, finally find something that I'm happy with? And that's why I've had so many jobs, because I see something out there, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll try it out. And, you know, during the job interview process, the job interview process is such, like, a sham. Because when you think about it, the job interview process really is just... Two, two entities, okay? The employer and the employee, or potential employee. And they're both bullshitting each other. They're both like, oh yeah, I'm the best, I'm the best, so you're never gonna find anything better than me. You know, the company's trying to make itself look like the best thing out there. And the employer, or employee rather, potential employee, is trying to make themselves look like the best goddamn candidate that's ever come up the main turnpike. It's really just two parties bullshitting each other. <clears throat> and if you've done interviews, you know this. You, you know that you know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay? Because a potential employee, a potential employment candidate will say anything they could think of if they think it's going to help them get that job. And if the employer is desperate enough for people, they'll say anything that they can think of to try to attract people. <laughs> from 2021, from the beginning of 2021, to now, and to the present day, really is the best time to find a new job. Seriously, because think about it. Everyone out there is hiring. Everybody out there has vacancies. So there are there are businesses that are closing because they don't have enough people. Um, This is the best time. Oh, shoot. I missed some. Um, this is the best time to go out and find a new job because while employers are desperate, there's also a lot of openings. And some employers have actually caught on that they need to start paying people more. Which means... Um, which means that chances are you can find a good high-paying job somewhere. Um, and, and be relatively happy. Alright, got that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So it's just one of those things, you know? Everywhere is also being picky as hell or taking any well, thinking bringing the awful people. It, and that's that's part of the problem too, when you when you have such a um when the when the market is kind of like um upturned, you know. you run into the problem of 
you know, diluting the employment pool with bad candidates. But if you're not a bad candidate, you don't have to worry about that. <clears throat> um, you know, if you go into, if you apply for jobs that you're genuinely interested in, and then actually follow through, there shouldn't be a problem. If you're the type of person that is like, take for example somebody who's on unemployment and they need to you know do a job search history every i don't know what the rules are but like certain number of jobs uh, applied for every month or whatever those those are the ones that are the bad apples they're going to go out there and they're going to apply for 50 jobs that they aren't even qualified to do just to say that they applied for them so yeah, there's there's definitely two sides to that coin. Thinking that's another part of your problem. Not even sure what sort of job I would not be irritated to go into. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, so I the the job I have now I kind of found on a fluke. Now I was kind of in a panic because my last job I was actually fired from, um, and I. I shouldn't have been surprised, but I guess I kind of was. Because I worked for a communications company that did two-way radios, and the company... Whoa, we got deer in the yard. Um, without going into too much detail, it was, it was just... It was kind of shady. You know, I was kind of concerned from day one, like, uh, okay. Something's not right here. Um, so... I kind of saw it coming, but I guess I didn't really want to believe it. And then finally, when it happened, I was like, well, this sucks. Yeah, yesterday would have been my one year anniversary there. Um, so, um, so, yeah, I was just like, all right, well, this sucks because now I need to find a job like fast. Oh, they paid me vacation time. They paid me out vacation when I left. Um, I just think that they... Uh, honestly, I think they didn't want somebody who was... Sta you know, was regularly standing up for themselves. Um, I think they wanted someone who was just a yes man. And I'm not a yes man. I'm not a yes man. If I see something that is... fucking stupid, I'm gonna say this is fucking stupid. Um... And they didn't like that too much. And, you know, that's that's their business. You know, they have the right to run their business the way they want. I also have the right to not work for them if I don't want to. And I'd been on the fence about leaving there more than a few times, but it was paying all right. And, you know, I just uh, decided, well, I'll stay. Um, basically, they had tried to get me to quit a few times, and I was like, "No, you're basically gonna have to fire me because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna just quit." And eventually, they did. It took them a long time. I think they had to come up with excuses, but when it happened, that was it. You know, move on and, and go forward. So, the job I have now, I kind of found on a fluke, and I was kind of rushing to um, find something. And I saw this job and I was like, you know, that actually looks kind of neat. So I'll, I'll uh, try it out. You know, I'll, I'll interview and see if they hire me or whatever and we'll go from there. Um, and sure enough, they called me. They had an urgent need for somebody right away, which was kind of a red flag. But the manager told me why they got rid of their last employee. And I was like, okay, that's understandable. Um, and so, um, <laughs> and it's funny too, because, uh, right after I interviewed, I caught COVID after two years, two and a half years, I caught COVID and I'm like, are you kidding me right now of all the times of all the times right now? Because then he calls me back and he's like, oh, yeah, we'd like to offer you the job. And I'm like, <coughs> oh, I'm dying. He's like, all right, well, <laughs> you know. um, 
so it just it ended up being a shit show but i started on time and uh i'm still i still have some of the effects of covid i still have the cough but um but yeah it turns out that i i really like what i'm doing and um you know the the job is pretty decent it's also going to allow me if i stay here um it's also going to allow me the opportunity to relocate if i want to yeah it was really bad like seriously like i couldn't believe it i was so angry i started to get a fever and i never ever get fevers like i almost never catch the flu i'll catch a cold i'll ca i'll catch like a really bad cold like twice a year but it's always just like runny nose, congestion, like that sort of thing. I never get fevers. I never get so sick that like, uh, like vomiting, fever, any of that stuff. And thankfully, I, I didn't have vomiting this time, but I had a fever. I had like a 103 or something. And I was like, uh oh, I have a feeling I know what this means. And I took a COVID test, an at home test, and sure enough, tested positive like almost immediately the line showed up on the test you know and i'm like oh fuck this sucks so bad because now i'm like all right well how long is this gonna last right because i just interviewed for this job like i i need i need to get back to work okay i can't be off of work for you know 90 days or or whatever um i just i just can't so, thankfully, right around when he called me back to offer me the job, I, I was starting to get better. I didn't have the fever anymore. I just had really bad cough. Um, couldn't breathe really well. And I still have a really bad cough. It's not as bad as it was, but if I overexert myself... Or, um, or I go into, like, really cold air, it will, it will just put me into a coughing fit. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, anyway. But I'm liking what I'm doing now. I'm getting paid more than I was getting paid before. The thing that sucks is I'm still without health insurance. I gotta wait 60 days for that. Uh, 30 or 60 days. I forget what he said. Um, and then a year for any time off. And I've switched jobs so frequently that I haven't been able to take, like, an honest-to-goodness vacation in such a long time, you know? Like, with vacation time. Paid vacation. I've taken a week off. <clears throat> And, uh, actually, no, I think when I was at the dealership, I, I stayed there a year and a half. Um, so no, Florida, Florida was on vacation time. But I used it as soon as I got it. I didn't, I didn't wait around. I was like, because I, I knew I wanted to get out of there. So I used it as soon as I, I earned it. I used it as soon as I was eligible. Um... But yeah, it's, it just sucks because, like, I'll stay at a job for almost a year. And at that point, I've become so, like, desensitized to it and so tired of it that I just don't want to do it anymore, you know? <clears throat> Sounds like an earthquake. What's going on? Let's take a look. Oh, it's not. Where is it? There it is. That's in the Sendai region. That's near, uh, or north of the Sendai region. That's where, uh, Chris Abroad lives. Uh. Shaking. Iwate, Miyagi, and Akita prefectures. The coastal region. Like, north of Fukushima. So it's down, Fukushima's down further. But. Huh. No, um. No alert generated, so that's fine. We'll go back to the game. <clears throat> I can't wait. Japan opens up this month. 
for tourists, and I can't wait. I'm hoping I can go by the end of the year. It's probably not going to happen, because I would need to take an unpaid vacation. But if I can afford to do it, I want to go. I've been waiting so damn long to go. And I noticed you said, uh, hang in there, you said yesterday on your stream that you are like a quarter Japanese, which I think is fascinating. And it's really cool because I have been so fascinated by Japan for such a long time and I've wanted to go for such a freaking long time. And then of course, the moment that I get ready to actually pull the trigger and go, boom, COVID. And then they closed the country and I couldn't go. I was supposed to go two years ago. And I that was what I wanted to do. Um when we ended up going to Florida, I wanted to go to, uh, to Japan. And, uh, it didn't happen. So, in the meantime, I've been slowly learning Japanese. I've been trying to, you know, figure out exactly what I want to do when I get there. I've been learning about different places to go. Um, been watching a lot of streamers, not Japanese streamers, but like British streamers that live in Japan and other Japan related stuff so <clears throat> I I think I'm ready you know I still could learn more Japanese but I mean everyone could right I think I know just the bare basics to get by if I needed to um but where I plan on going, really, it's like every most everyone's going to speak English anyway. You lived in South Korea for a while. That's pretty cool. Only knew bare basics. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know, like, you know, I know the, the basics, like, um, how to introduce yourself and... Uh, how to get someone's attention, how to ask where something is, um, and I know the, oh, actually, um, you said the other day you weren't familiar with the, uh, Japanese early earthquake warning thing, their, their, like, earthquake alert thing. <coughs> That's actually what prompted me to start learning Japanese, because I wanted to know what they were saying. It's basically, it's this, it's... So, it basically means, uh, emergency earthquake warning, please prepare for strong shaking or something like that. Strong tremors. I forget what the exact translation is, but... It's so friendly, right? It's like, hey, excuse me, sumimasen. I, I want to get your attention here. You know, it's not like the United States, which is, for technical reasons, as obnoxious as it is. But, but, but yeah, it's so friendly. It's like everything else in Japan. It's so goddamn friendly. <laughs> it's it's like it's almost cartoony. Man, there are a lot of rocks in this field. I am not looking forward to this. I already spent like 25 grand on a plow. Now I gotta spend another huge amount of money on a rock picker. And I need a loading wagon for all of that uh, straw that I generated on that other field. Damn! <clears throat> So yeah, anyway, I'm I'm like super pumped. I can't wait to go. I really want to go bad. What am I telling work? I need time off to go to Japan. I mean, I need to tell them I need time off to go to this Kenny Chesney concert with you later this year. So I don't know. I don't know if Japan's going to happen this year. I mean, I would like it to, but realistically, I don't think it's I don't think it's doable. I think I think what I would like to plan for is cherry blossom season next spring because one it will give Japan enough time to to get properly back open 
and two, if you're gonna go to Japan, you need to go during cherry blossom season. Like, that's basically, it's basically law. Like, you just have to. You know? <clears throat> so. I mean, that's my opinion. It, it doesn't, it doesn't mean shit, right? Like, that's just my opinion. But that's when I would like, like, I would love to be able to see it. I, if I wanted to just see cherry blossoms, I could just go down to Washington, D.C. But I want to see, I want to see it properly. I want to go to Okinawa. I mean, that would be nice. I don't know if I'd be able to make that happen the first time we go to Japan because Okinawa is literally as far away from anything as you can get. Like, you can't just take a Shinkansen there. You can't, you would have to fly there. You would have to take a domestic flight there. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's just one of those things. I don't know if I could make that happen. Is it on my list of things to do? Absolutely, definitely. I just don't think it's going to be like a first time thing. Like going up to Hokkaido. I don't think, I don't think I would be able to make that happen on the first time we go. I think I would just like to go and get acclimated to the society because it's it's not western culture there it's it's totally different <clears throat> um you know i want to see all of japan i want to go to places like sapporo and and osaka and all of hokkaido which is huge i want to go up to wakanai i want to spend a night in hakodate I want to see all of the places. Um, but doing that all in a week um, is, is not something I think is going to be able to be doable for me. Especially on a first trip there. And as you get further away from Tokyo, the people that speak English are less and less. So it's like I need to learn a lot more <laughs> before I go. I need to learn so much more before I go. <clears throat> you know, because I, I can't just get by on, like, knowing how to say, you know, where is the train station? <laughs> you know, I can't. That's not enough. You read it, I speak. Yes, you read hiragana way better than I can, because I can't at all. Um, but you can't really speak Japanese because you haven't practiced. You know, you know what I'm saying when I say, uh, eki wa doko desu ka? But, you know, it's, you're the reader, I'm the speaker, I guess. Uh... You know, konbanwa o watashi wa J des. Or more formally, I guess, the uh, konbanwa hajime mashite watashi wa J des. Am I supposed to practice it? Yeah, practice on 911 calls. Yeah, when, when you take a 911 call, just speak to them in Japanese. They won't have a clue what you're saying, so they'll just start giving you information. <clears throat> I mean, I think that's a that's a genius way of doing your job. <clears throat> Hang in there. Have you ever been to Japan? I can't remember if you said you had or not. never went and that is a crying shame you know there's um i don't know how into it you are but there are a couple of channels on uh youtube that are just like i think one of them is called virtual japan 
It's just a guy that walks around places with a camera. He doesn't speak, he doesn't say anything, it's just, it's kind of ASMR. But it's so beautiful, because all of it's in 4K. And he just goes places. And just walks around, and it's like, this is incredible! This is so damn beautiful, why is this not where I live? You know, and... Obviously, Maine is beautiful for different reasons. But I've lived here for, you know, almost my entire life. You know, the, the novelty's worn off to me. <laughs> it's still my home, and it will always be my home, but, like, the novelty is worn off. So when somebody says, oh, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's Portland Headlight, I'm like, yeah? Okay. <laughs> and? <laughs> You know, I want to see the Tokyo Sky Tree. I want to I want to walk through Shinjuku. I want to go shopping in Akihabara. Went tons of places and came back here. So now it's time for Florida, Japan. I think I think the smart thing to do would be to live in Florida and travel to Japan. <clears throat> that's I think that's the smart thing to do. And I'll give you a couple reasons, okay? Here's here's my TED talk. So Florida, great place for severe weather. Totally down with that. Uh, huge ham radio community down there. So again, a plus for me. Um, love thunderstorms. Again, you know what can you say? Also, the ocean is not actively trying to kill you with temperature down there, okay? You get in the ocean down in Florida, and it's like bath water. That's, that's my kind of ocean right there, okay? Sharks, jellyfish, okay, yeah, I get it. There's dangers, but the biggest danger up here, getting in the ocean, is just getting in the damn ocean, because the water is 40 degrees year-round. I don't care about sharks, whatever. Punch them in the eye, you know, whatever. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah, Maine sees like five tornadoes a year on average. But Florida sees a lot more. I'm down with that. It's just one of those things. Like, Florida is a whole different... Just from the weather aspect of things, Florida is so different. Um... You know, we never see hurricanes up here anymore because now with the new criteria, you know, the National Hurricane Center um, calls, classifies anything, any tropical cyclone that comes up this way, a subtropical whatever, subtropical disturbance or, or extra tropical or whatever. They never call it a hurricane anymore, okay? Even, um, even Sandy that came up as far as New York, New Jersey area, Connecticut. Like, they called it Super Storm Sandy. It wasn't a hurricane anymore. Technically, I guess it could have been. I don't know what the wind speeds were, but... Like... It's all wording. It's all wording. So we don't get hurricanes in Maine anymore. Um... But down in Florida, they do, obviously. I think you would lose against a shark. You couldn't manage... Strongly dislike heat, couldn't manage Florida. See, the thing... I get that. I understand that. And I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I, I despise high heat and humidity. But I also despise bone-chilling, obscene levels of cold. And it's weird because I love winter sports. I love hockey. I love skiing. But I hate waking up every day for eight months freezing my ass off. It's just, it's, it's, it's so draining. And it's so miserable and it's so depressing eight months out of the year to not have really any enjoyable sunshine.
And I think that's why people up here are such assholes. Because they're so depressed. People down in Florida are like, whatever, man. Just, just chill. Just be chill. Like, Jimmy Buffett is from Louisiana, and he lives in Florida. He's not from Maine. You know why? It's fucking cold up here. <laughs> even now, even now, it's 57 degrees and cloudy outside. Okay? And it's June 2nd. Give me a break. You got one of those sun lamps? That actually sounds enjoyable. That actually sounds real good right about now. <laughs> it's just so frustrating, you know? Every When I lived in Florida, every day I woke up, I went outside, and I'm like, man, this is awesome. Even if it was raining, I'm like, this is awesome because it's still 75 degrees. And yeah, it was always, always humid. But the thing is, is it doesn't matter because everywhere you go either has an air conditioning or a pool. So it, it doesn't truly matter. You know, the only time you have to care is when you're outside. <clears throat> So, you know, I, I, I don't know. That's just me. That's just me. Let's take a look at the weather real quick. It's uh, 50, uh, it's supposed to be 54 tomorrow and raining, of course, because it's rained for like a week straight here. Uh, right now it's mostly cloudy, 55. And look at it. Look at out in Albany, 72, Montreal, 70. Like, where is this cold front? Partly cloudy, mostly cloudy, areas of fog, so it's going to be miserable. It's going to be humid because it's foggy. Dew points are really high. Areas of fog in the morning, cloudy with 50% chance of showers, highs in the mid-50s. Again, this is springtime weather, and yeah, we're still in spring, but uh, it's just, it's obnoxious. It's so obnoxious. It's miserable. This, this is what gets me depressed, you know? Scattered showers, high of 65 on Saturday. That's not so bad. Sunday, high of 67. See, we're not even out of the 60s yet. And it's June. We're not even out of the 60s yet. Now, we had a couple of really hot days recently, but even along the coast, it didn't get that hot. So... I don't know. It's it's just it's a struggle for me. I want to go where it's warm. The amount of weather happening right now is fantastic. I mean, maybe. <clears throat> you know, if it's gonna be rainy, at least give it at least make it worth my time. You know, give me some thunder and lightning. Give me some. Give me some heavy rotation. Give me some hail. Not... But I take that back. Don't give me hail. I don't want to dent my Subaru. Give me some rotation. Give me give me something to be interested about instead of, oh, it's just raining again. Give me a reason to be excited about the weather instead of bored of it. Because rain doesn't excite me. Unless it's really raining. And it doesn't really rain here. It really rains in Florida. <laughs> you pick up like four inches an hour down there. I mean, every rainstorm in Florida is a flash flood. Essentially. <laughs> you love it here. <laughs> You're just messing with me now. Um... <clears throat> <laughs> oh, I should make a helper do this, but it costs money. Extreme rain. I mean, extreme. I I will be happy about extreme rain. But typically up here, when you have rain that's that heavy, you're gonna have thunder with it. You're gonna have a thunderstorm with it.
You need a bigger rain gauge. Yeah, like a six inch section of PVC pipe really is what you'd need. <clears throat> it's just, uh, the, the rain down in Florida is just absolutely crazy. Um, I don't even know. I wonder if it's raining right now down there, you know? Let me see if I can, uh, well, first of all, I need to find the damn application. <clears throat> Let's take a look, shall we? Where is the weather today? The weather today is ne near DC, Richmond, Virginia area. Looks like a slight convective risk there. Oh, let's see here. Let's look at this one. So, let's see. <clears throat> that's, uh, that's around the DC area right now. So that's pretty cool. Lots of lightning there. But that's about it, really. I'm not seeing... Wow, this thing is running really bad. I'm not seeing much of anything else. Check out Melbourne radar. Oh, why is it so slow? Not usually this slow. Now there's a little bit down here. There's like some scattered thunder sh uh, showers. All the way from Lauderdale up to Tampa. That's the uh that's like the evening thunderstorms in uh in Florida right there. But I mean nothing to be excited about. If you few bits of lightning there but like nothing nothing super crazy you know so I mean ugh. I miss Florida weather I really do it's so like main main weather is crazy because it changes so much but so is Florida like you can count on it raining every day there Yeah, exactly. Evening thunderstorms. That's the best thing around here. Right at sunset, you know? <clears throat> right at sunset, get a nice big thunderstorm. You know, something with a few warnings. And, you know, th that's why I was saying, make it worth my time to stay here. <laughs> don't just, uh... Don't just give me, you know, drizzle every day. So, I don't know. I do know I'm hungry, though, damn it. I am so hungry right now. Alright, I've got my helper plowing this field, so I don't have to focus on this. I do need a rock picker, though, to get all these rocks out of this, uh, out of this field. So, I need to find... Stone pickers. There's two different, three different types. <clears throat> I guess I'll go with the cheap one. And I'm wondering, should I lease it? Probably not. Forty-one thousand dollars. Oh, I picked the wrong one. God damn it. Urgh. All right, we're going to buy this one. 
and then the other one, which has already depreciated in value, of course. Son of a gun. All right. <clears throat> uh, all right. I'll take this tractor. move this cedar out of here so yeah I don't know I think I think I would like to live in Florida at least for a short time but I mean like I said before I'm almost 40 so I don't have in the grand scheme of things a whole lot of time left you know factor in the average average life and expectancy is like what around 80 so I'm halfway through my life okay whoops <clears throat> so you know it's all downhill from here so what do I do do I say yeah let's let's move from Maine to Florida hopefully find a job down there and the thing is is about my job is my my company has operations in Florida so Theoretically, I could just transfer. And from what I understand, the company helps with relocation expenses, which is awesome. So one of my biggest hangups about relocating again across the country, because last time I did it and I moved to Florida, I went down there without a job. Uh, and that was, that was terrifying because I had just the money in my pocket, which was just enough to get an apartment. And then I had to start like really looking for work and um you know it, it there were other reasons that I came home but ultimately it was you know lack of money and a few other things yeah yeah i mean if 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 all i'm being told about this job is true and again i'm I'm apprehensive to believe all of it because I've been down this road a hundred times before. Um, you know, I have to be careful about what I believe. But if it is true, you know, now I have an easier way to relocate. An easier way to get back down to Florida. Maybe be a little bit happier. Although I'm doing pretty well now. Um, but ultimately I want to be able to take more time for myself you know I want to be able to take vacations and it's never really been about getting time off because most of the jobs even if I didn't have vacation time would give me time off even if it was unpaid just to, to do what I needed to do it was having the money to actually go places you know I've never been out of the country I've never been off the east coast I've never been out of the eastern time zone um <clears throat> and that is you know that sucks I want to be able to go places I want to be able to um explore you know, I haven't even seen all of Maine, and I've lived here all my life, almost all my life. You know, but I want to go places like the the uh, the deserts in the West Coast, on the Western United States. I want to be able to go to California. There's not much about California that interests me. I just want to go there to say that I went there. You know, touch the Pacific Ocean. I'd love to go to Hawaii. I'd love to go to other places in the US that like Devil's Tower Wyoming for instance I'm a huge fan of Close Encounters of the Third Kind I would love to go to Devil's Tower Wyoming um, I'd love to go to Louisiana I'd love to go to like New Orleans or go to Texas go to wherever um, but yeah Liggy B how you doing welcome another Mainer in the chat 
chat's full of Mainers tonight. Look at this. Uh, been to New Orleans. Yeah, I mean, I just, I want to be able to go places. Um, and I also want to be able to travel abroad too. I want to. I've always wanted to go to the United Kingdom to see England, Ireland, Scotland. I want to go to places like Japan, um, Australia. I'd love to go to Australia, but Japan is probably first on my travel list. You know, would it be easier to go to London? Sure. You know, I don't have to learn a new language. Everything is pretty similar there but I want to go to Japan I can go to London anytime I want to go to Japan <clears throat> before I do any of that I need to get my passport <laughs> that's that is like first step I need to get my passport and I've been procrastinating so bad about getting my passport so I think it's going to happen here pretty soon I love that, uh, is that a, uh, is that one of your emotes? That is awesome. The little trees. That's really neat. You've been everywhere I'm mentioning? Rub it in, why don't you? <laughs> it's great that you have, though. I mean, I, I envy people that have the ability to travel. I think that's so cool. I really do. Um. <clears throat> oh, more shaking. That's really cool. I think that's awesome. I, people that travel... Um, people that travel seem to be happier, I think. I don't know if that's true, it's just, I feel like I sense more happiness from people who have had the opportunity to travel different places. There are a few places that are big travel spots that don't really interest me. Like I don't think I'd ever have any desire to go to France. Um, I think Germany would be pretty cool. I wouldn't mind going to Germany. The problem with Germany is that, like, I don't want to learn German. And I know that there's a lot of people there that speak English. But, you know, I at least showing an effort to learn the language, I think, is, is helpful. <clears throat> um... I don't think I'd ever want to go to China. I don't have any desire to go to China. There's nothing there that really interests me, fascinates me. Um, South Korea might be interesting though. I, I, I don't think I'd have an, a problem going to like Seoul or something just to see, you know, see the sights. <clears throat> You know, that would be... I'd love to be able to do that. I'd love to be able to become popular on, like, YouTube or Twitch and just be able to, one, have income, like, steady income from that to justify putting all the time into doing it. And then being able to travel and make content, I think, would be so cool. Obviously, like, I picked Seoul because, like, that's probably the most well-known place. But, yeah, like, even with Japan, like... Everyone's like, oh, Tokyo, Osaka, Sapporo. But I want to go places that are not... They, I wouldn't call them, like, A-list destinations, you know? Like Sendai, for instance. I'd love to go to Sendai. I'd love to go to uh, places in Hokkaido, like Wakanai, just to see the northern tip of Japan. Um, you know, Hakodate, which is in Hokkaido, but it's like one of the first places from the southern end that you that you enter Hokkaido from. Um, 
you know, I just, I find it so interesting, so fascinating. And these places are beautiful. <clears throat> Hokkaido, I think I'd want to do during the summer, though, because it, it snows very, very heavily up in that area. Uh, but places like Okinawa never see snow. So... He taught English for a few years. Now, that's interesting because Japan has the JET program where you can get, you can basically get your expenses covered to live in Japan for, I think, a year, uh, anywhere up to, like, six years, I think, teaching English in Japanese schools. That's what uh, one of the YouTubers that I watch um, pretty regularly, Chris Abroad, his channel is Abroad in Japan, he started in Japan as a JET program English teacher. Oh, that's really neat. That's really awesome. I actually seriously considered that, uh, like, doing the JET program. I thought that would have been really neat. But I am I feel like I'm too old to do something like that right now. You know, I have ties here that I, I you know, like, I have a, I have a nine-year-old. I can't just take off for a year to another country. Um... And, but I, I think that would be so cool. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, I would need to have a, at least, a, I think, a bachelor's degree um, to, to qualify for the JET program. But it sounds really interesting. Like, to be able to experience that, to be able to go to Japan and live for a year and just teach English. Teach a language you already know, which is great. The problem is, is I don't know much Japanese, so communication is would be difficult at best. <clears throat> if only I could, like, if only I had a time machine, you know? If only I had a time machine. I think, I think Liam would have fun in Japan, but I also think that getting treatment for, you know, his situation would be much more difficult in Japan, where it's maybe a little less uh, mainstream over there, you know? I wonder, can I, can I set this guy to do, oh yeah, he'll do it on his own, he'll do it with a helper, that's awesome. Alright, let me switch to, okay, I need to clean up the mess that this helper made. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that's, and that's the thing, like, most other... There's, there's pros and cons, because most other developed countries in the world have, like, uh, um, you know, national health care. You know, Japan has national health care. The UK has national health care. Canada, etc. All these places, national health care. So, getting access to health care would be easier, more cost, uh, cost effective. But, at the same time... You know, you have to think about the society and the culture. Like, I don't know what, how Japanese culture looks at conditions like ADHD or autism. You know, do they even recognize those as disabilities? A lot of places don't, especially in, in you know, Eastern culture. So it's like, how do you how do you get treatment for that? How do you get access to the medications for that and stuff like that? So I you know it's it's tricky. There's a lot of thought that goes into something like that. Did I get all of that field now? Uh
Looks like it did. Cool. Alright, now I need to buy a loading wagon, like a pickup wagon. So let's see here. Goodness. Um, let me see what I have for that. Oops. No, 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 no. I don't want to do that. All right. Um, forage wagons. It's a really cheap one here. This is not super expensive. <clears throat> All right, stop there. And this is a nice tractor. Run out to the store and get my forage wagon so I can pick up that straw. We'll be in business here. This farming is very relaxing. I love this game for that exact reason. I used to play games like Super Mario Maker and Overwatch and Counter-Strike, um, Modern Warfare, you know, like high intensity, stressful games. And I started to ask myself, why? Why am I stressing myself out? Why am I making myself salty on stream? When I could just be doing something like enjoyable, relaxing, therapeutic, and something that doesn't require so much concentration that I can't interact with my chat. And to be fair, I almost never have people in chat anyway, but um, it is nice that when I do, I'm able to actually interact with them. <clears throat> And I just love this game. Like, agriculture fascinates me, you know? I have agricultural license plates on my car to support local agriculture. Because I believe that without agriculture, we wouldn't be eating anything. You know, a lot of people don't, don't understand that. So much goes into farming. Um, so much goes into stocking the shelves at the supermarket, you know? And I think this is a great game, a great simulator, to show that. <clears throat> um, I started re-watching Clarkson's Farm <laughs> on Amazon. One, because uh, Amazon got rid of uh, Top Gear on Motor Trend, so I can't watch Top Gear anymore. And I decided, uh, well, I'll re-watch Clarkson's Farm. Um, so that's what I'm doing. Rewatching Clarkson's Farm. I'm also watching, this might be of interest to you, uh, hang in there. Um, a new show, I don't know how new it is, it came out this year, but, uh, I don't know when it was released. It's a show on, um, I think it's on HBO Max. It's called Tokyo Vice. It has Ken Watanabe in it. And it's about this American that travels to Japan uh, to work at a Japanese newspaper and he becomes involved with like the police and trying to write stories for his paper and getting access to crime scenes and stuff like that and there's a gang element to it and everything it's it's really kind of a neat series there's only one season out so far but I'm hoping it gets renewed for more I haven't watched the final episode of the, of the season yet um, but I found it to be a really interesting, uh, series so far. Um, I won't give away any spoilers, but 
Ken Watanabe is not really like the protagonist of the series. He's not really the main character. He does he is featured frequently, but he's not the main character of the series. Now, I don't know where it's on HBO Max. I don't know if it's going to get renewed. I haven't read anything about it. Um, but I hope it does because it, it has potential, I think. Thank you. I figured I would help any theory today. Yeah? You yeah. want to text it to me? Well, sure. Okay. Okay. Oh, goodness. All right. I had to uh, put my slippers on because it was getting cold in here. <clears throat> my studio window's open because I have all the lights on. Um, but my feet are getting cold. No, hurry up! So yeah, Tokyo Vice, HBO Max, really good, really good series. Highly recommended if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, if you're into like the Japanese culture and language, because it, it, there's a lot of Japanese speaking in it. Uh, and I've been trying to watch more shows that feature the Japanese language, just because immer I think immersion is best when you're trying to learn a language. Even if you don't know what they're saying, you can kind of apply certain phrases to certain scenarios and kind of understand. Especially if you know some basics. It's made it a lot easier for me anyway. Um, which is why I've been watching a lot of uh, YouTube channels and Twitch channels focusing on Japan. <clears throat> nice. Alright. So I gotta drive around this field, pick up all this straw that I... Uh, that I have here. And I wasn't thinking about this before. I, sh I could have bailed this. I could have used a baler to do this. But I feel like that would have required more of an investment. So, I'm just gonna collect it bulk for now and store it. And I'll eventually use it for probably cows or something. I don't know. Ah! Straighten out. Yeah, I really enjoy this game. Um, I mean, I'm more into simulators anyway because I can do them at my own pace and there's really... Simulators are kind of a sandbox thing, so like there there aren't a lot of objectives that you're required to complete. Um, colony building sims. Have you heard of uh, RimWorld? Have you heard of um, Surviving Mars? By chance? have heard of that. I used to play Surviving Mars on stream for like, there was like a month where I was playing it every stream. Um, I just got into like a, a real kick on it. It's it's a colony building sim. That's exactly what it is. It's, you're, you're creating a colony on Mars. Um, it's kind of a really fascinating little simulator. It's in your library unplayed actually. I would recommend that you at least check it out. At least go through the tutorial and let me know what you think about it. Because, um, I really enjoyed it. It's actually a game that I may bring back to this channel at some point. I have so many freaking games on this computer, it's ridiculous. I mean, look at all of this. All of this is games. You know, like, I mean, I've got bus two versions of Bus Simulator. I've got two versions of Truck Simulator. 
three farming simulators. I've got City Skylines, Snow Runner. There's Surviving Mars right there. Um, I, I mean, I have freaking everything. And I only play a handful of them. It's crazy. My desk, your desktop, my desktop traumatizes you. What is wrong with my desktop? It's, it's perfectly organized. I have my stream related stuff down here, which I never really use on this computer anyway. I have all my games over here and then I have everything else on this side. <laughs> you should see the desktop for my streaming computer. It's, it's not organized at all. It's, uh, this is, <laughs> there's no rhyme or reason to anything here because this is basically just my streaming computer now. That's all it is. Um, <laughs> I used to use that, the computer I'm using to run my stream right now, I used to use as my general PC, like just my, my general purpose PC. So I have all kinds of like radio programming software in there and all kinds of other things. Um, but when I built my new gaming computer, um, now I use that as kind of my general purpose computer-ish. Like I'll use it to edit videos and do Photoshop work on it. I have Adobe Creative Suite on it. I have a couple of laptops that I use as more of my general purpose stuff, like web browsing and stuff like that but um if i have something specific that i need to do like video editing i'll use my gaming rig because it's more powerful my streaming computer is essentially just my streaming computer now like that's all it does it runs obs it runs all of my applications for streaming and then i just feed my gaming pc into it so it's a two pc setup um <clears throat> And that allows me more flexibility because really my gaming PC is just another video source. And I have a, a 5x1 HDMI switcher that I can use to switch between my PC and my Switch and my other Apple TV and I think I had a couple of other things in there too that I can switch to. Um, but it also allows my stream to run better because my streaming computer doesn't have to run the stream and a game. It can just run the stream and just focus on running the stream, and that's it. Grabbing a snack. That sounds really good right now, because I'm super hungry. I, I need to really eat food, I think. The problem is, I hate eating on stream. Oh, does it not take straw here? That's right. I have to do like a third party. Oh, man. That sucks. Uh, well, I can dump this. <clears throat> Temporarily, I can dump this. Ice, how you doing, man? What's happening, dude? Haven't seen you since uh, what we ran Mario Kart 8 on Officer Dan's stream the other day. I really enjoy doing that. I I need to like get interactive with other streamers more, and I think that is like such a perfect thing to do. Is just Mario Kart. That was a lot of fun. Even if I wasn't winning, I was still having a lot of fun doing it. Not winning, I mean. Oh, the clipping is so bad on that. <laughs>
Oh, I'm getting tired. I shouldn't be. I've only been streaming for an hour and a half, for crying out loud. We are making progress here. This is great. Definitely going to have to take out a loan, I think, to uh, continue operating the farm here. But the other option I have, too, is I could probably sell this straw, I wonder. And I could probably sell all of the wheat that I harvested. Um... <clears throat> Once I'm done picking up this straw, then I can plow this field. And then I'll have to pick up rocks. Um, oh boy, you know what? I'm wondering. <clears throat> will I need to cultivate it? And if so, will the rocks come back? I might have just wasted a bunch of time and money. Missed some. Did I seriously fill that up again? Gosh darn it. I thought I had enough. This last little bit.
Perfect. I probably should have leased some of this equipment instead of buying it. Here. I can part put this guy on the field and start him working. See how my rock picker's doing. Rock picker's doing really well, actually. And I think this is cultivating the field as it's going, so I won't actually have to cultivate this field. Which is super nice. I might only have to do the first little bit, because I, I think I missed some areas. Definitely missed some areas. But that's alright. <clears throat> as far as precision farming goes, that's the other thing too. I need to get... I need to do soil analysis for all of this stuff, but I can't because I don't have the money right now. Do I take out loans? I mean, most of my money has been spent in new vehicles, so I'm wondering if I lease, um, I'll have to buy a gator. I'll have to buy all the stuff that goes with the gator. So let me see if I borrow, well, let me do this first. Let me sell off the stuff that I have. Let me sell off the wheat. Let me try to sell off the straw. And maybe that will allow me to um, have enough money to buy what I need to buy. So we'll drop this here. <clears throat> Gotta head out. Quick today and tomorrow off. Right on, man. Are you, um, you probably aren't still here, but uh, if you are streaming, I'll try to drop in. Um, ah, dang it. Ice, thanks for dropping in, my dude. One of my longest and most reliable viewers. <laughs> been, been around since, I think, almost the beginning, I think. Which is pretty awesome of him. Hang in there's back. Welcome back. It's a really interesting name for your channel. I like that. It's very positive. Wheat. Wheat. Wheat's the only thing I have. Now let's see. I can sell my wheat for eight fifty eight. And where is that? Way over here. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go. Now it is support rolls. I see.
Yeah, this is such a... Uh, I, I can't say enough about this game. I mean, this one is so new that, like, I'm not really well established in this game yet. FS19 I was a lot more established in. I have a much larger farm with a lot more equipment and just everything you could ever need. This game is still so new that, like, I haven't gotten there yet. I had been playing a lot of Grand Theft Auto roleplay, but I just recently decided that I probably won't be doing that anymore. Um, the server that I had joined... It's so new, but it's made up of, like, a lot of people from my previous server. And I feel like it was rushed and really isn't very well put together. Um, it's so, it's so messy and disorganized right now that it's just not something that I want to get involved in right now. I got run over by a truck while a paramedic was attending to me, I remember that. That was actually launch night. I haven't played it since launch night. Um, I was, you know, I was having fun, but it, it wasn't the same as my old server that went away and it's kind of sad because I had a lot of fun doing that um, and but I just don't want to like I don't want to have to relearn it all over again it's completely different so I, I just for now I said you know what I'm gonna step away from it go back to farming simulator and a few other things uh, try to gain my regain my audience that way and I'm working on a lot of... I'm putting a lot more effort into YouTube content now as well. Um, I did a couple of Let's Play videos for Lawn Mowing Simulator and Power Wash Simulator that I put on YouTube. And I want to do more, like, IRL stuff on YouTube as well. I've got a few time-lapse videos of, like, driving down to Florida, driving from Florida to Maine. A few, um just interesting videos on my YouTube channel so I I'm trying to do more focus on that and um, the live streams are still going to be you know a regular thing a weekly thing but I want to branch out more too so we'll see how it works I used to have, <coughs> excuse me, I used to have pretty good viewership on Twitch, and that obviously it died off because I started playing what many would consider to be a boring game like Farming Simulator. And I wasn't playing, you know, AAA titles like, like Apex or Fortnite. Because they just don't interest me. The games don't interest me. Um... <coughs> I do play some some popular games, like occasionally I'll play Mario Kart or Mario Party or whatever. I haven't done Switch Sports yet on stream, but I have been playing it. That one's kind of a difficult game to play because you need, or difficult on stream anyway, because you need space. You have to be able to move around. But I want to get more into Flight Simulator, Farming Simulator, obviously, and there are a few other games, too. Never know. Never know what, what will pop up on Storm Force games. I feel like I need a snack. I need a snack. Maybe when I get back this tractor back to the farm, I'm going to step away just for a quick second to have a snack. trying to think about what that snack should be. I'm thinking cheese crackers. I like cheese crackers. Goldfish crackers, those are pretty good too. I can only eat a, some of them at a time because it just, it's like eating peanut butter. It just like gums up my mouth. But yeah, cheese crackers, I think. Could make myself a cup of miso soup, but... I don't know if I want to do soup. 
I don't know if I want to commit to a whole cup of soup, you know? Because I have dinner as soon as I'm done with stream. Like, I'm going to have salad and steak tonight. So I don't want to, like, ruin my dinner. I just need a quick pick-me-up. And I really should have alcohol, too. I shouldn't just be drinking Coke. I should be drinking, like, a rum and Coke right now. That. Oh, 16 liters. Really? It's not even worth it. All right. Let me step away real quick. I'm going to grab some, uh, some snacks. More to come right after this. The Stormforce Games Merch Store is now open. Come browse the latest and greatest merchandise that Streamlabs has to offer, from t-shirts, hoodies, jackets, hats, and more, all with your favorite Stormforce Games logos and branding. All Stormforce Games merch is priced to sell, with most items priced so low, you can't beat it. Come check out the Stormforce Games Merch Store on Streamlabs. You're watching Stormforce Games, where lightning does strike twice exclusively on Twitch. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Um, we are playing Farming Simulator 22 today. There it is. I grabbed some snacks. I have uh, Ritz cheese crackers. These are pretty good, actually. The flavor is a little... a little weird, but... It's just good enough for me to enjoy it. So that's what I'm that's what I'm doing right now. I'm eating cheese crackers. Uh oh man. I wonder. Can I sell that straw <clears throat> if it's not in a bale? And then the question is, how am I going to pick it all up without a tractor with a loader on it? <clears throat> so let's see if I can do it this way. Come on, baby. <laughs> oh, 
Oh boy, I've really stuffed this thing now. Sounds like you're a fan of the uh, Ritz crackers. All right. Uh oh, uh oh, oh no! Almost got that thing stuck. <clears throat> that was way too close for me. So in theory, I should be able to take this through the barn here and possibly sell this straw as bulk straw without it being bailed? I don't know for sure. Yes, I can. Perfect. <laughs> That's awesome. I need to get with making more uh, emotes for my channel. I just have the original three affiliate emotes. Um, I've been afforded additional emote slots, but I don't... Um, I just haven't had the time to, like, create any new ones. You know, my... My three emotes... are... I mean, nothing special, really. They're ju just... Whoops. Well, and that one. Um, but I, I need to create some new ones. I have all my subscriber uh, icons made. They're all little weather icons. You can see one next to my name there. The uh, the little thunder sh thunder shower thunderstorm. I always. When I say thunderstorm, I always want to say thunder shower, and I always end up saying. Thunderstorm, like I'm just mispronouncing everything. They're all icons from the the uh, Weather Star system, so <laughs> all my subs get to eventually go from like you know little rain, little clouds to like little rain clouds to little thunderstorm clouds, which I think is pretty cool. Um, but I need to create some more emotes, I think. <clears throat> and I do all my own graphics work, I do all my own video work, all my own audio work, because I don't, I can't really justify the cost of paying someone else to do it. Plus, this way I get exactly what I want. Um, but it is, it is obviously a, you know, a very consuming, very time consuming for me. Making that animation for um, for uh, my opens, making all my show opens, it's uh, you know it's a lot of work in After Effects to do that. And while I'm very proud of the uh... oh boy, I am really hosing this up bad. While I'm really proud of the outcome, it's just a lot of work. <clears throat> I mean, I have so much stuff that I've created. Yeah, content creation, there, there's so, like, just creating this, just this content, is like 30% of everything. You know, creating this lower third, creating all my graphics and everything. It, it's just, it's ridiculous. I have so much stuff. Trying to just come up with a logo, you know? That that in itself is crazy. Just trying to come up with a logo. Just making this took me like two weeks trying to figure out the exact colors and the font and how I wanted it laid out. Like, that's crazy. That took me so long to come up with. And then coming up with things like my... my start screen and all this other stuff and setting up the discord and it's just it, so much work goes into it you know and then the show open that i have the storm center one is just one of like 
God, I don't even know. Like one of probably half a dozen that I have. You know, it's just, it's so much work. Um, but yeah, anyway. Whoops. There we go. <clears throat> a lot of details. A lot of details. When I when I set up um, when I set up Diabolical Diabetics Twitch stream, like the first questions that I asked were like, okay, what do you want your colors to be? Like, pick two or three colors, and then what do you want your logo to be? And what do you want your channel name to be? All this stuff. You know, like, you have to make all these decisions. Um, you know, and what even do you want to stream? You know, that's a big part of it too. Like, what do you want to stream? And do we have the resources to do that? I kind of stuff this up quite a bit. There's going to be a bit in there that I can't get unless I get a loader. <clears throat> so we're going to sell this, this little bit. And then what I might end up doing is seeing if one of my other tractors I can put a loader on. <clears throat> Need another cracker. <clears throat> All right, I'll just pick up this mess that the helper left behind. So this field is now plowed. So now I need to do the rock thing. And honestly, do I need to plow this other field up here too? I think I do. Number 12. Yeah, 12 needs to be plowed too. So <clears throat> I'll just set this guy loose on that field up there. Very cool. All right, let's go shopping. So I need to buy a gator. Uh, 
Um, we'll do that. All right, so that's 20, uh, no, wait, that's 15,600. I can afford that now, so we'll buy that. And then I need to buy, for that gator, I need to buy the three-point lifter. A thousand bucks, I can afford that. And then I need to buy the scout, this guy here. <clears throat> This is seventeen thousand dollars. This will let me do my my uh, land, my soil analysis. So I need quite a bit of. Uh, well, I could lease it though. That's what I'll do. I'll lease that. All right. So now what I can do. Uh, <clears throat> we'll get this stone picker going on another. Well, we got to clean up a little bit of mess here. But then we'll get it going on the other field. But I do have to empty it, too. Trying to make sure that the whole field shows as cultivated. Alright, let's go back here. There's still a just a little bit, a few tiny spots. <clears throat> And then, I don't know if there's a debris crusher on this map or not. That's going to be a tricky thing to figure out. Fun thing about my, or awesome thing I guess about my job I forgot to mention earlier is I don't have to go to go into work until 11. Not to brag, but that's pretty freaking awesome. It does mean I'm working until 7 at night, which, eh. During the summer it's not going to be so bad, because there'll still be plenty of daylight. But, uh, you know, there's there's pros and cons. You know, so I work, I work 11 to 7, uh, and I work Friday through Tuesday. Perfect, that's all done. Yeah, I, I do too, I really do too. There was, there is one shift option at my job to do a 7 to 10 and then a three to seven. It's a split shift, which would afford me a few hours in the middle of the day to like come home and either take a nap or just get some stuff done. 
And I think I might eventually like to do that because I'd still end at 7 and I'd start earlier but I'd have a little bit of a break in the middle of the day to do things I don't I don't know I haven't decided yet part of me says oh, it'll be nice to be able to do something in the middle of the day or come home and take a nap partway through your shift but at the same time you I have to wake up earlier so I, I don't know how I feel about that yet that's down the road um but yeah time time will tell looking for the rock crusher where is the debris crusher here there it is up there <clears throat> i do tend to stay up later um Uh, I might as well just have this thing go now. There we go. We'll just get it working. Alright. Here's my gator. I have to assemble it. Some assembly required. So I have my motor unit, and then I have the back unit here, the bed that I have to put on. And then I have to attach the scout unit to the three-point hitch. Just like that. Lift it up. Perfect. Off we go. Turn on all my lights. Look out, people. Yeah, I, I do tend to stay up later at night than I want to get up earlier in the morning. Because I've always gotten up early. Like, when I worked in TV for 20 years, I got up at, like... It, it was either... If I worked early morning for news, I was getting up at, like, 3 or 4 in the morning. If I was working a regular day shift in, like, Master Control or something, then... I would get up at like 6 to be in at 7, something like that. So I'm tired of getting up early. It's nice to have a job that I can get up at like 10 or 9.30 and have that few extra hours of sleep, be able to do something. If I have to go to like a doctor's appointment in the morning, I can get it out of the way. If I have to go to the bank, you know, it sucks working 7 to four or eight to four or eight to five or whatever because by the time you're you go into work before anything opens and you are out of work after everything closes so you got no time to do anything six to four thirty last week Ugh. the only I will say the only good thing about that is that you're out at 4 30 and you have the whole night to like do whatever you want like if you wanted to go down to the beach or you wanted to go to like an amusement park or even just go shopping like you have the ability to do that with me now getting out at 7 it's a little bit harder it's not impossible but it's a little bit harder to do that take our soil samples here so we're gonna lower this bad boy down drive out onto the field and take our samples overall I'm liking my schedule I mean I need 40 hours so if I'm going into work at 11 I gotta work till 7 that's just the way it works but You know, maybe I'd split the difference and say, okay, maybe I'll start at 10 if I can get out at 6. But because of the way our contract is with our with our client, I've got to be on the road during those times. 
so. It is an interesting job, though. I find it fun. Alright, so we'll take soil samples here. This will allow us to analyze the soil chemistry, which will therefore allow us to fertilize and seed properly and better track our expenses for each field individually, which will have better financial ramifications, hopefully. Look at all the rocks in this field. Holy moly. <clears throat> Alright, so we received some of our analysis back. analysis and we have one more field that we own over here to do so what else do you spend your time doing uh, as it pertains to twitch do you uh, what kind of streamers do you enjoy watching or content, I should say. Not necessarily streamers, but... What kind of content do you enjoy? That's good, because I play a pretty wide variety of games. Um, I mean, most are in the simulator genre, but... Board games. Now, that's a lot of fun. I enjoy watching and playing board games. One of my favorites is... Actually, two of my favorites is probably Uno and Monopoly on the Nintendo Switch. Um, I do have... can't even think of the name of it now. It's like 50 games, 50 different types of board games on the Switch. I forget what it's called. I like Mario Party too, because it's kind of like a board game.
All right. I think we're good now. So we'll send these off for analysis. I can fold up this unit. And actually, I can return it now. And I won't need it again until I buy more fields. All right, so there's the results of our soil samples for our three fields that were owned. 15 is entirely loamy sand. 14 is a pretty good split between loamy sand and sandy loam. And 12 is a mixture of sandy loam and loam, which is awesome. So now I can have a better handle on my expenses per field. 15, for instance... Uh, spent $300 taking soil samples. I've spent $73 in fuel, $121 in vehicle maintenance, and $364 and counting in uh, helper costs, hiring costs. I netted about $6,800 from what I harvested. So um, we're, we're up on this field. Um... For field 14, I haven't harvested anything from it yet, so it's all expenses. Soil samples, fuel, vehicle maintenance, helper costs, etc. And 12 is the same way. I'm I'm in debt on those two fields to the tune of about 2200 bucks. But ultimately, I've made nearly $6,000 on this field because of the harvest on it, which is awesome. So, uh, let's see. What are we doing here? What else do we need to do? I need to... Crystal HD 170. Uh, who makes that tractor? That's a uh, Zetor. Odd name for a tractor. So let's see here. Uh, tractors. Crystal HD. Wow, that's an expensive tractor. Holy shit. Uh, I can add a front loader attachment for it. Quick, and then I would have to pick the front loader attachment and then a bucket. It's quite a bit of money. Quite a bit of money. So I think what we need to do here is take out a loan. Uh, let's see. All right. So I have a $30,000 loan taken out. I'm going to take this tractor down to the <clears throat> store and modify it, get a front loader put on it. I could probably sell this tractor and get 
something smaller for less money, but since I have it, I might as well just do it. It's an interesting tractor on the inside. I like the little helper seat down there. It's pretty cool. My four hydraulic remotes over there. All kinds of cool stuff. They did a really good job with this franchise. Like they've they've come a long way in making sure things are accurate. They have licensed equipment, real world stuff. It's it's a lot of fun to actually see this. And the detail, the level of detail in the back of these tractors is just incredible. All kinds of cool stuff. All kinds of cool stuff. We're touching two and a half hours of streaming time here. I might... I might just wrap it up here pretty soon. I might just wrap it up here pretty soon because I need to eat dinner. It's nearly 9.30. I need to eat food and relax a little bit before, um, before my day of work tomorrow. Yeah, I'm super excited that you dropped by. I really appreciate that. Hopefully you can make some time in your life to uh, drop by more frequently. I, I'm going to try to stream more regularly. I always say that. I always say, oh yeah, three nights a week, and I never do it. Um, but ultimately my plan now that I have a semi-rigid schedule is to do... Um, uh, either Wednesday, Thursday, Friday nights or Thursday, Friday, Saturday nights. Um, I, I don't know for certain what it will end up being right now, but that's what I'm hoping for. That's what I'm really hoping for. Um, buy that. And then I need a bucket. Perfect. Let's see if this works. Alright, so that weight... First of all, I don't think I really need that weight. So let's go sell that weight. <clears throat> yeah, so hopefully, uh, and what I'll probably do is end up moving my stream time to uh, probably 8 p.m. I don't have a solid schedule yet. I'm just trying to, like, experiment with a few different things. We'll get rid of that. There we go. Let's go hook this stuff up and then we'll wrap stream up. <clears throat> but yeah, it's always fun to uh, to uh, hang out with a fellow weather nerd and uh, just talk about common interests. I like that. Like I said before, I don't I don't have the viewership to. To have people to chat with every stream so it's nice to actually have someone drop by and like hang out it sounds sad but like it's true <laughs> like normally when I'm streaming it's just it's just me diabolical diabetic will hang out occasionally uh, and once in a while I'll get somebody that will drop in and hang out for a while or one of my friends from elsewhere but uh, but yeah, 
Come by anytime, anytime you see me streaming. And I'm I'm gonna drop in on your streams as often as I can when I see you. I have alerts for all my followed streamers turned on, but for whatever reason, I don't get alerts from Twitch. It doesn't say like, hey, so-and-so is streaming now, or hey, so-and-so is live. Like, I follow a lot of big name streamers too. Like, Sea Dog VA was streaming earlier today, and I have alerts turned off for him, and I didn't get an alert. Diabolical Diabetic happened to be checking in, and she saw that he was streaming, and I'm like, what, seriously? He's been streaming for how long? And I missed his entire stream. I missed all of Iron Mouse's stream because she went live and I didn't get a notification. So I wouldn't put a lot of trust in the Twitch notification system. It doesn't always work. But, yeah, anyway. We're going to go park this tractor, and I think I'll wrap things up. So it's been awesome, people. Thanks for hanging out. Everyone that dropped by and said hi. Everyone that, uh, you know, uh, hung out and chatted and all that other stuff. Um, I will be live again. Hmm. Maybe tomorrow night. I don't know yet. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But uh, thanks for watching, everyone. We will see you guys next time. Discord and Twitter for more information. And remember, the merch store is live, too. Thanks for watching, everyone. Good night.